Here we're going to drive mass balances for continuous stirred tank reactors, including on steady state CSTRs, batch reactors, and semi batch reactors. And the important thing is that we're doing balances on individual components as opposed to an overall balance. And so let's look at the notation and we'll write down the balances. For the number of moles within the reactor in A, so in A has units of moles, and that's within the reactor. And then we have moles flowing into the reactor. So Fa0 has units of moles per time, say per second. And Fa is the flow rate out, so that also has units of moles per second. V is the total volume of the reactor contents and then ca is the concentration of component a in the reactor this is also the concentration of component a leaving the reactor we're assuming this is well stirred so they have to be the same concentration they will also have to be the same temperature the other things that we're going to take advantage of is that CA within reactor is the total number of moles of A in the reactor divided by the volume of the reactor. And the flow rate of A leaving the reactor is the volumetric flow rate times the concentration in the extra stream, which of course is also the concentration within the reactor. And concentration, of course, moles per volume, let's say per liter in this case. And then the concentration in the feed stream we'll call CA0. So the general form of the mass balance is that we have an accumulation term. And this corresponds to the number of moles of A within the reactor at a given time. It can change with time. And it changes because we have flow in of, say, component A flow out, and then we have reaction. Let's look at uh, a simple A goes to B reaction. Do the balance on component A, so the change in the total number of moles of A within reactor as a function of time is the flow rate of A in, the flow rate of A out, and then there's a rate of reaction of A times volume. Well, we have an equivalent equation for B, and in general, what we want to do is write down a balance for each component and solve these equations simultaneously. It means we typically solve them numerically because for a real system, we're going to have multiple reactions. We're going to have to have an energy balance. We're not going to be able to do this analytically, and so it's simplest to write down a balance for each component. So let me write down the balance for B. So I've written the general equation where we assume that, that B may also be flowing into the reactor. Now, if we want to solve these equations, we're gonna need initial conditions. And initial conditions, meaning at time equals zero, number of moles of A, is the initial number of moles in the reactor. And the number of moles of B, likewise, is the initial number of moles of B in the reactor. And so then solving these equations simultaneously with these initial conditions would correspond to solving the startup of a CSTR. Now note, there's no advantage to changing any of these variables to fractional conversion doesn't help to solve the equation actually can make it more complicated to do so much easier work in terms of these specific variables so let's look at the case where we have for example a batch reactor well for a batch reactor we start with the same equations but there's no flow into the reactor the term goes to zero there's no flow out and then this just reduces to these two equations for a batch reactor so let's look at a semi-batch reactor. 
And there are different forms that might take, but again, we start with the same equations. The semi-batch might be where we're feeding in one of the components. Let's say we're feeding in A, but there's nothing leaving the reaction. We're controlling rate of reaction by how fast we feed in A. So then the mass balance for component A would be a flow rate of A in, but no flow rate of A out. And the mass balance for B would look like the batch reactor mass balance. Now for both batch and semi-batch, we still need initial conditions. We have to know how many moles of A and how many moles of B are in the reactor at the start at time equals zero. So let's, the third type reactor would be a steady state CSTR. Again, we'll start with the same equations. The steady state means any derivative respect to time is going to be equal to zero. And so the equation for the mass balance for A just reduces to flow rate of A in, flow rate of A out, and then rate of reaction times volume, and then equivalent one for component B. And let's just look at the simplest case where rate of reaction is just a first order reaction in component A. That means rate of B would be a plus sign K times CA and then the CSTR balance we write in terms of concentration of volumetric flow rate in, concentration in, volumetric flow rate out, concentration out, minus K CA times V. So for most cases in the CSTR the volumetric flow rate in is probably pretty close to the volumetric flow rate out because we're dealing with liquid phases, but it may not be, and so we've written it in general. We allow them to be different. Important thing to keep in mind is the concentration leaving is identical to the concentration in the reactor. And then we would solve these equations simultaneously perhaps also with energy balance. And then typically we'd solve most of these differential equations for batch, semi-batch, and CSTR startup by using a numerical program that numerically solves differential equations.